everyone, welcome to take two of Unraveling the T-Shirt Quilt Mystery, Quilt Cabana Corner. I'm Sandy Caldwell. If you joined me earlier this morning for my Facebook Live, um, the audio cut out apparently. So I know several people left comments. I didn't get any of the comments. I ended up deleting the video and I decided we'll just try it again now. So hopefully you can hear me. I don't know what happened other than I think I was having some internet issues. But now you get the new and improved me because from the time I did that one to the time I did this one, I just got a cut in color over with the amazing Dawn at LA Hair in Hanson. <laughs> so here I am. Okay, so what are the five most asked questions I get when I'm making a t-shirt quilt or teaching others to make one? That's what we're talking about today. So let's take a little mystery out of it and clear it up for everyone once and for all. So here we go. Question number one, how many t-shirts? Well, I'm going to tell you that that depends. It depends on how big you want your quilt to be, how heavy you want the quilt to be, and how many of the logos per shirt you're going to use. Are you going to use just the fronts? Just the logo on the front, the logo on the front and the back, the sleeve logo, the breast pocket logo. All of those are fair game for um, making your t-shirt quilt. So the tendency for people is to want to send every quilt that they've ever owned, not every quilt, every t-shirt that they've ever owned, they want to include in that quilt. Um, but I will say that's not really the best way to go because the uh, quilts get real heavy. They have an interfacing on them and a batting and a backing and they do become super heavy. Hi Tina, I hope you can hear me again this time. Um, and also because um, they do get real large uh, and a little bit too heavy to be functional and uh, so you might want to think about a themed t-shirt quilt. So maybe one quilt is all your dance recital t-shirts Maybe another quilt is like your, say your life is good t-shirts. Okay, thank you Tina for letting me know that you could hear me. I might have deleted that video prematurely because some people are saying they were having trouble. Some people said they could hear just fine. So I appreciate the feedback. Um, and I deleted it and it's gone. So got to do it again. Um, so basically you just need to decide what the best of your best t-shirts are going to be. What are you going to send to have made into them? have them made into. I can't even talk right now. I should have gone with the first video. <laughs> okay. Question number two. How long does it take to make a t-shirt quilt? So for me, it takes me 30 hours. So if I were working on that full time for the week, not that bad. Um, but because I have a teaching schedule and long arming, it's usually a good couple weeks for me to turn one around anyway. And the reason why it takes so long is because you want to plan it properly. You want to give the t-shirts a rough cut, a final cut. You want to apply the interfacing, make some sashing, um, and then of course quilting it and binding it. So that all takes some good amount of time. And in fact, I only take on commissions for t-shirt quilts once or twice a year because of it. So it's definitely a commitment of your time and your resources. Okay, question number three. How, um, how do I prepare the t-shirts? So whether you're going to make the quilt yourself or you're going to send it off to someone, the t-shirts have to be washed and dried. So you would want to make sure that you're following your manufacturer's instructions um, on the tags for washing the t-shirts. If you're sending them off for someone to make them, um, of course on their website they would have what they want you to do, but as for me, I just say wash them and dry them and send them. Don't cut them. Don't try to iron them. Um, you can get into a lot of trouble when the iron hits the logo. Ask me how I know. Uh, <laughs> so with the pressing, you do have to be careful. And of course, then you would sit down and talk with someone about how you want it to be designed. Um, and the whole planning stage leads us actually into question number four. And question number four would be, how do I plan it? Well, Pencil and paper works just fine. You can go old school. Uh, and also, you know, if you have EQ7 or EQ8, you can design it that way. And 
Uh, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. You want to make sure that your colors are well spread out. You don't want like three t-shirts that are red all bunched up in one area. You also want to figure out, you know, like what you, how many blocks you're going to have, especially if you're paying someone to make it and they're charging you by the block, you want to get the most bang for your buck, right? So let's just say for instance, well, let's go back because I missed showing you this, which I did show you in the, in the first one. When you're talking about how many t-shirts, so hi Nancy and hi Kristen, thanks for joining me. This is take two because I had a little audio snafu earlier. Um, so this would be a quilt made with nine shirts. Okay, that makes a good lap size quilt. And this one would be one made with 30. And I'm gonna say 30 logos because we did use fronts and backs um, in a lot of the breast pockets. So if you're talking about how many blocks, this quilt had 24 blocks. So a block would be this, and that is, um, it's about a 14 and a half inch block. And that for adult size t-shirt logos is the size that will make sure your logo doesn't get cut off. So we use a ruler like this. And so that I call this when I'm making them, this is my block A's. They're going to be the full logo size. You can also do blocks where you put two half logos when they're not quite as wide. And this template is hard to see, but it's basically half the size of this big one. So you could put like two half size logos and make that a block. And then you can go even smaller and you can use the breast pocket logos, which a lot of people don't like to use, but I like to use them because you can put four together. This again, it's hard to see, but you could put four together as one block, uh, mix them and match them. Or you could do like two of these and the half size one and mix and match it. So there's a lot of things that you can do when you sit down to plan them. It doesn't have to be just the t-shirts. We also include sashing in them. And a lot of people, a lot of mine have been black quilts because the kids want their high school colors and a lot of the schools are black, red, and white. So they go with the black sashing, black thread, black backing, or red backing. Um, but it's fun. It's all fun to figure out uh, what you want to do to personalize it. Okay, so question number five. And now I'm just looking at my list here because I'm all discombobulated from um, my technical issues from earlier. I just want to make sure I'm hitting on everything that I hit on in the last video. Okay, so I did. So this brings us to question number five. Do you need to put interfacing on the backs of the t-shirts? The answer to that is yes, yes, and a resounding yes. Now the interfacing will go on the back of the t-shirts and it's white and it's lightweight and it's fusible and I like to purchase it by the bolt because you end up using a lot. And the purpose of using an interfacing is so that the quilt has some more stability and durability to it, especially if it's a quilt that might get hung up. Without the interfacing on the back and without quilting it properly, you're gonna end up with a sagging quilt right down the middle. And that's not really fun or pretty to look at. So when you put the interfacing on the back, it makes it easier to sew. The pieces together. T-shirt material, the jersey knit, it ravels and it frays. So when you're putting this on the backing, you're kind of just making sure the integrity of the shirt stays all while it's being stitched. And it gives it a little bit more of a, a heft to it, which is nice. So what kind of fuse, um, fusible interfacing? I use Pellon 911 FF, Fusible Featherweight White. And uh, I use, for each block that's like that size, I use a 17 inch square of interfacing. So you're almost using half a yard per shirt. So it does get up there in cost. And the best way really to buy it is just to buy it right off, uh, just buy a whole bolt of it. I get it on Amazon. Um, and so that kind of brings us to the end of the five most asked questions for the t-shirt quilts. I will be having a blog series in a couple of weeks on making t-shirt quilts, sort of a little step-by-step -step tutorial. You can also contact me if you're looking for lessons and you wanna make your own. I'd love to help you out. And my website is quiltcabanapatterns.com. And this week, if you hop on over there and you join up for the newsletter, you get a free pattern. 
and it's a cute little mugrug pattern so you should definitely check it out and if you had questions from the last video from this morning that I didn't get to answer uh, please feel free to, to ask again I'd love to hear from you so t-shirt quilts can be fun you can personalize them you get to upcycle your shirts which is great it's a fantastic use of um, fabrics that are no longer wanted in your wardrobe it's a great way to make a memory quilt um, especially these kids are involved in so many fun activities we kind of want to remember them all and also you can use more than t-shirts you can use sweatshirts you can also use hockey shirts and basketball shirts I've used all kinds of fabric and thanks to the interfacing that makes it so much easier to work with if we're going to be using those kinds of materials all right so I think that that is it for today and thanks for joining me thanks for joining me again Nancy and Tina I know you were on earlier I appreciate you listening and I will see you in about two weeks talk to you later bye bye